Okay, so let's start. Uh, today we have uh, Tathagat uh, from our group. Uh, uh, that's our IPS seminar speaker. Uh, Tathagat did his master's from University of Rochester and uh, he's doing his PhD with uh, Andrew Zordon. Uh, so today he'll be talking uh, about uh, super growing optical fields, amazing applications, and recent and experimental synthesis. Tathagat, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, Vivek. Uh, yeah, so uh, hi, I'm Tathagat. Uh, and uh, so I'm a graduate student at Rochester, as we were told. I'm actually a student researcher here at Chapman. So, yeah, I'll be talking about the work we've been doing uh, for more than a year uh, on super growing optical fields, their applications in imaging, how to generate those fields, and uh, experimental synthesis. So, Yeah, so this is actually, these are the people who are involved in this work. Uh, so from the experimental side uh, at the University of Rochester from Nick Mahivakas' group, uh, Sethraj and Vadud. And from the theory side, uh, here at Chapman uh, from uh, Professor Jordan's group, is Abhishek and I. Uh, so we have been working on this. And this will be an outline of, this is an outline of my talk. So I'll first discuss uh, what super oscillation and super growth are. And then I'll discuss uh, how uh, you can uh, obtain, uh, you can reconstruct a sub wavelength object using super oscillation and super growth. And then I'll talk about how to mathematically generate super oscillating and super growing fields. And then I'll describe the experimental synthesis of super growing fields. Uh, so if you have any doubts at any point, please feel free to stop me. So let's begin. So super oscillation is defined as when a band limited function locally oscillates at a rate uh, faster than its highest Fourier component. So what does it mean by that? Let's look at an example. So suppose you have a function e to the power i x plus e to the power i two x minus one. So you can see that the highest special frequency in this function is two, right? But if you look at the function very close to the origin, you can approximate the function to the first order as one plus i three x. And this is approximately the same as e to the power i three x near the origin. So you can see that although the special frequencies in this function doesn't go beyond two, the function can uh, show behaviors uh, 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 which uh, exceed the high, highest special frequency uh, uh, present in this function. So this is a uh, illustration of this fact. So <clears throat> suppose we talk, we're looking at a function uh, and we have, we're considering two nearby point x naught and x, then the function at x can be approximated as the function at x naught multiplied uh, by some phase uh, where the, uh, uh, to the first order, uh, 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 it's it's like a, a special local wave vector that's guiding how the function is oscillating locally. So from this definition, you can calculate the uh, local wave vector, uh, local wave number at some point x naught, and it's actually the imaginary part of this logarithmic derivative of the function. And in this in all the subsequent analysis, we'll assume that the function is band limited, which means that, uh, so it has a Fourier expansion of this kind. Uh, so we say that the function is super oscillating at X naught if this uh, this value of the KX naught is uh, greater than the band limit K max. So uh, yeah, this is not a new concept. Actually, uh, De Francia introduced this concept. So uh, he suggested that the concepts related to super directive antennas could be useful for optical imaging beyond the diffraction limit. And later, this concept gained prominence due to work of Yakir and others, uh, uh, where uh, so in relate in the context of uh, weak value amplification, where uh, uh, the value of a measurement of an observable can lie uh, uh, outside the spectrum of the operator. And later, Michael Berry and Sandu Popescu showed that the uh, super oscillatory nature can actually propagate 
uh, far beyond the uh, wavelengths, making it uh, a far field feature. And also the super oscillation I will describe is uh, mathematically equivalent to the weak values of momentum operator. And recently, uh, Chapman itself, uh, there has been work on uh, generalizing this phenomena to uh, arbitrary quantum obs observables. But that's not what we will focus on. So we'll focus on the optical side of uh, this in this talk. So we'll look at super oscillation and super growth in optical context. So if you have a diffraction limited optical system, so in that case, the smallest resolvable features are of the order of the wavelength of the light you use uh, ratio by the numerical aperture of your system. <clears throat> and what you can actually beat this uh, limit by using super oscillatory optical field spot or uh, sub wavelength uh, optical field spot and they provide far field uh, super resolution. There are alternative approaches to achieving super res resolution. So uh, there are evanescent waves based approaches. So where you try to detect the waves uh, from an object uh, at, at a distance uh, lesser than the wavelength. Uh, and there also, uh, uh, there's also approach based on negative refractive index lenses where uh, specifically designed lenses can uh, reconstruct uh, evanescent waves. So, but there, there, there are drawbacks to these approaches. So the first approach is actually requires it's a near field imaging. So it's kind of invasive, which is not ideal at every situation. And the second approach is very difficult to manufacture uh, negative refractive index lenses. So, uh, but this uh, uh, super resolution using super resolution, this actually has been achieved in experiment. So this is a work by Baumgart uh, at all, uh, where they achieve sub wavelength focal spots using optical eigenmodal approach. And later, also, Kuzawa et al. achieved uh, super resolution by utilizing the uh, super oscillatory properties of uh, Laguerre Gaussian uh, beams. So, this is not just a theoretical concept, it's been used in the experiments as well. So, uh, let's look at the example an example uh, closely. So this is a function cosine x plus i sine x to the power n. So a is a and n are parameters. And if you expand this, the highest special frequency in this function is n. Uh, in other words, the smallest wavelength present is two pi by n. And near origin, if you expand it, the function behaves like e to the power i a n x. And you can choose a to be much larger than one. So in that case, you have a wave which uh, shows super oscillatory behavior because uh, the frequency is, the local frequency is much higher than the band limit. So we can take a look at this uh, in terms of an, uh, 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 at this plot to understand it better. So here on the top panel, we are plotting the absolute value of the function in orange, and the blue shows the uh, real part of the function. And uh, this is with respect to uh, a scaled uh, x-axis. And you can and and this uh, vertical line show the uh, extent of lambda mean. And you can see that near origin, the function is actually oscillating at a rate that's much higher than the. Uh, smallest wavelength uh, present. And this uh, shaded region is showing the super oscillatory uh, region in this function. We can actually look at K, uh, the local wave vector I defined is the imaginary part of the logarithmic derivative uh, of the function. So you have put, here we're plotting a scaled K. Uh, and this black dashed horizontal line show the band limit. And you can see that the local wave number is going beyond the band limit near origin. So uh, this is where we're showing super oscillation, just as the uh, plot above shows. Excuse me. So from the first plot, how do you see it? Uh, so this basically, uh, you see that this is the smallest wavelength available. But you see, if you look at the real part of the function, you see features that are 
like oscillating at a so from the distance between the fissures. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, uh, but there is an issue with this. If if you see, this is this is showing the function in log scale, and you can see that the values near the origin are much smaller compared to. Uh, the values away from the origin where we don't see the super oscillation. So this is actually uh, a uh, an issue. So because the function has to be band limited, it has to uh, make sure uh, in some way uh, 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 to uh, to have the Fourier components only below k max, which actually leads to this enhanced uh, side lobes. And this is a like a caveat of uh, Super oscillatory imaging, this presence of enhanced side lobes. And this leads to issue in imaging because you don't, you first get a poor quality image. And secondly, uh, it's also, uh, it, it requires, a, you can see it requires a, a like huge range, a huge dynamic range for the detectors. So uh, there have been works to mitigate this issue of presence of side lobes. So this this is a numerical work by Rogers et al. where they uh, optimize the uh, uh, size of the super oscillatory spot and also optimize the intensities within with respect to the side lobes. And this is an experimental work by Hu et al. Uh, where they get rid of the side lobe along a particular dimension by using uh, moon-like apertures. But uh, in this direction, uh, actually, Professor Jordan proposed uh, this idea of supergrowth, where basically showed that uh, supergrowth is a concept which can be useful for uh, super uh, resolution imaging as well. And uh, so that's what we are gonna uh, we are going to talk about now. So this is this illustration is showing the idea of supergrowth. So the local growth rate is in this case larger than the highest uh, Fourier component. So you have the function at x, it can be approximated at fx naught and to some exponential kappa x naught uh, to the first order of x. So this kappa x naught is sort of like, is a local growth rate of the function and uh, is given by the real part of the logarithmic derivative. Remind, remember that the uh, imaginary part was the local wave number. So we say the function is super growing if the absolute value of this growth rate kappa is uh, more than the k-max. So now let's look at super growth and super oscillation together. So super growth again, local growth rate is larger than the highest Fourier component. So in general, uh, kappa plus ik is given by the logarithmic derivative of the function. So the local wave number is the imaginary part of the logarithmic derivative, and the uh, local growth rate is the real part of the uh, logarithmic derivative. Uh, and we see super growth, if the uh, local growth rate is more than k max, for oscillation if the wave number k is more than k max. And we actually explore this uh, and uh, we see that, uh, I'll talk about it in a bit, is both of these phenomena, they give us access to sub wavelength features. So this is what our uh, first work that I'm going to discuss is about. So in this work, what we do is we do a quantitative comparison between the intensities in super oscillatory and super growth growing region, regions, and we also compare their lengths. And we also prescribe a method to reconstruct sub-wavelength objects with super oscillatory or super growing PSFs. Uh, PSS main points red functions. So uh, let's look at it at, at, at more detail. So let's come back to our example, fx cosine x plus i sine x to the power n. Uh, highest wave number is n. Near origin, we saw it super oscillating e to the power i a n x. But if you look at the function at this, uh, near this arc tan one over a, the function uh, sort shows to the first order an uh, exponential behavior. And this uh, we have seen from the definition of kappa. So this is the growth rate, local growth rate at arc tan uh, one over a. It's given by n by two a minus one over a. 
and it's actually greater than n if you if you select a uh, much larger than one. So we see super growth in this uh, uh, close to uh, around this region. So this is showing uh, the behavior of the uh, both the super oscillatory and super growing natures of the function. So again, the orange is the absolute value of the function. Blue is the real part. And the blue shaded region is showing the super oscillatory area. And the red uh, orange shaded area is showing you the super growing area. And we can look at the local growth rate, uh, local wave number and local growth rate of the function as well. This is a scale version of this plot, of, of this uh, parameters. And uh, the, the, again, this dash line shows the band limit. And we see that we've seen that super oscillation is seen near the origin. And we see that super growth phenomena, is just, we see it uh, away from the origin. But uh, um, one interesting aspect of this is that although super oscillation happens at a very low intensity region, we see that the super growth it does not happen at such low intensities. So it's it's like a transition between high intensity and low intensity regions. So it has way more light. Uh, and we actually, in this work, we actually quantify the light it has. So uh, we see this function over here and we define the intensities between points A and B as the uh, L2 norm of the function. And uh, so the total intensity of this function, if you calculate it, it can be approximated to uh, uh, analytically to have this uh, uh, expression, but uh, the uh, the key point is that it goes as a to the power 2n. And just a reminder that a should be much greater than 1 to achieve uh, super oscillation and super growth. So if I look at the intensity in super oscillatory region, this can be, again, we calculated it approximately. And this is. Uh, uh, proportional to a to the power n minus half. So you can see that this is uh, the total intensity is exponentially higher compared to the super oscillatory, the intensity in the super oscillatory region. Uh, and we can calculate the intensity in super growing region as well. And it goes as a by square root two to the power two n. So it is exponentially. Uh, like it is exponentially suppressed compared to the total intensity, but still it is exponentially uh, higher compared to the super oscillating intensity. So uh, 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 that actually helps us with the issue of side lobe. So this is showing the comparative intensities of the super growing and super oscillating regions uh, for different values of the parameters A and N. Uh, and you can see that it's, uh, uh, the relative intensities goes up pretty fast. And this green uh, star is actually showing the a equals to six n equals to ten uh, point that that we, I showed the previous plots about. Uh, and at the bottom panel, we are showing the length of the super oscillatory region and the super growing region. They are comparative lengths as a function of a. And these lengths actually don't depend on the value of n. And uh, you can see that. Uh, uh, if you start from lower values of A, you you have a lot of super oscillation at first, but not much super growth. But as you keep increasing A, you uh, you decrease uh, the super oscillatory length of the super oscillatory region, but the super length of the super growth region in terms of lambda mean it goes to the value of one point two five. So in this way, you can you can approximate the function for large values of A to be a function with only super growth, but not super oscillation. So, uh, yeah. Is, it, uh, is that related the the way the intensity increases? Is it related to the length of the super oscillation and super growth? Is there something? Uh, like yeah, so length uh, plays a, a sort of a, a viral role here. Uh, so, in terms of the total intensity, uh, it's, it's hard to see because it's like uh, it's going as a to the power 2n and a to the power n. 
But what we also explore is like uh, the near uh, maxima intensities of the super oscillatory and super growing regions. So it's like the most useful regions of the super oscillates and, and super growth. And what we see is that in that case, because of this length keeps decreasing of the super oscillatory region. So the intensity, what happens is that it kind of increases at first uh, with A, and then it keeps decreasing because the length decreases. So yeah, this, uh, uh, so in that case, this, uh, length plays an important role because in experimental situations, that's the uh, relevant part of the super oscillatory range. So uh, we also showed uh, uh, in this uh, paper uh, a scheme to reconstruct a subwave length object. So for, for the case of incoherent imaging, the image intensity uh, S is given by the convolution between the object intensity and the point spread function of the, of, of, of the diffraction limited optical system. And you can use the Fourier convolution theorem and in, in uh, frequency space, it is given by a product of the, the image intensity is a product of the object intensity and the PSF uh, uh, in Fourier space. But uh, the, uh, the, because the optical system is diffraction limited, uh, this, uh, this formula only holds uh, till, uh, so uh, the point spread function only has uh, wave numbers till two, 2 pi by lambda naught in it. This is how the limit of diffraction comes in. So if you just invert this uh, formula. So you get the image intensity from the experiment and you know what the PSF is. And if you want to invert this, you lose the information about the higher frequency components of the higher specific frequency components of the object. So you, uh, that's how you lose the, uh, that's how the limit in resolution comes in. But what we show in this uh, work is basically you can, what you can do is you can, uh, consider a series of super oscillating or super growing PSFs. And uh, these help you bring out the higher specific frequency features of the objects. And you can use them to uh, reconstruct the object. So I'm not going to describe the uh, uh, mathematics of the method, but what I'm going to show is the results. So here we are showing the first panel shows the object intensity and uh, uh, the x-axis is the scale position, uh, a scale with respect to lambda min. You can see that this is actually a sub wavelength object. And the second panel is showing a, a, an example of a super oscillating point spread function where it is oscillating like cos square 60x. Uh, and again, the second, uh, third panel is showing a super growing PSF where it is uh, uh, showing exponential growth it the power like 190. Uh, but if you use, uh, so here sync reconstruction, this means basically you are only using the frequency component, uh, the special frequency components below two pi by lambda naught into numerical aperture. So if you use that and you can reconstruct the object, you won't see these features. So uh, this doesn't come out. Uh, hence the limit of resolution. But you can use a series of super oscillating PSFs like this, and you can uh, extract the features that you won't get otherwise, and you can reconstruct the objects uh, that are sub-wavelength. And you can do the same with uh, super growing objects as well. So uh, basically we show how to reconstruct objects using, uh, uh, reconstruct sub-wavelength objects using super oscillatory or super growing point spread functions. So uh, as I said, this requires a series of PSFs and you might ask, so how do I generate like uh, the super oscillatory or super growing features that I like uh, or that I want? So uh, this is where our second- uh, My question, so for super oscillatory, it comes naturally that you get sub-wavelength features. It's natural, super oscillatory PSFs have sub-wavelength features. 
uh, yeah. how would you physically yeah so in case of super growth what's happening is that the function is growing at a rate less like more than uh, k max so it's sort of giving you access to a so sub wavelength can we say that that's like a series of super oscillatory components if you expand that in terms of a series uh i don't think it is because uh, it's like it's the real part it's 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 sort of exponential so uh, my intuition is that you cannot write a super growth in terms of a series of super oscillating uh, functions uh, but i'll have to check math so have you ever used only super growths that are outside the super oscillatory yeah, yeah. range and then you would be able to reconstruct uh, yeah so that's that's what we do here in this in this case so here uh, the functions only show super growth in this region and use multiple of them right yeah, yeah. okay yeah. So maybe it comes from the fact that you're using multiple, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because uh, otherwise you won't get the uh, information beyond the Kmax. Uh, but what you can do is, so that's the kind of the uh, caveat of this uh, method that you have to use it yeah. multiple times, but you can do it. So this the second part uh, I'm talking about. So this second paper, uh, we discuss how to generate. Uh, so we, we provide a robust framework for generating super oscillating, super growing functions. And we, uh, we also prescribe an approximate approximation method to mimic arbitrary functions in finite intervals. So uh, let's look at the, uh, look at a general function more closely. So it's this Fourier space, we can always scale the frequency, special frequencies to be between minus one to one. So this is like a Fourier, uh, uh, the function written in Fourier space. And uh, you can see if you take the logarithmic derivative at x equals to zero, it comes out to have this form. So uh, it's sort of like a, an expectation value of ik with respect to g tilde. Uh, so g tilde is the uh, function in the Fourier space. So, uh, so what we do is we provide an interpretation of super growth super oscillation as the value of first commutant of g tilde, and uh, if the absolute value is greater than one, then you have super growth or super oscillation. So this is only possible if g tilde is negative or complex, because if g tilde is positive, always you won't be able to have something more than one. So uh, in that sense, G tilde is a pseudo distribution, which also makes sense because G tilde is a Fourier transform of a general uh, functions. If you don't expect it to be, a, to be a probability distribution. So uh, what we do is next is uh, we use this uh, 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 interpretation in uh, Fourier space and uh, used an orthogonal polynomial based prescription. So what we do is we because in minus one to one legendary polynomials they construct they constitute a natural basis. We expand g tilde k like the Fourier's uh, uh, in terms of the legendary polynomials. And the useful uh, three useful features of uh, the legendary polynomials is that. The first one is one, the second one is just k, and, the, and they satisfy between themselves an orthogonality relation. So you can use all this to calculate the logarithmic derivative of g at x equals to zero, and it turns out to be only a ratio between the first coefficient, the second coefficient, and the first coefficient. So uh, Basically, the first two coefficients of this expands and determines your uh, uh, like local growth rate or local wave number at x equals to zero, and you don't need to worry about the higher coefficients. Yeah, that's that's what I just said. Uh, so we can look at this in terms of a. Uh, 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 we can see a visual illustration of this. So here we're showing the function in Fourier space. Uh, it's like three two different Legendre polynomial expansion. So in these two cases, the functions have the same uh, first and second coefficients, but the third coefficient differs. So they are different functions. We are seeing that here. Uh, 
But if you're looking at the uh, logarithmic derivative, uh, I'm just plotting the imaginary part here. So in this case, you can see that it's different everywhere, but x equals to zero, uh, they become the same. Uh, and uh, so the only th the first two coefficients they they are required to get a super growth or super oscillation at x equals to zero. And higher order coefficients determine basically the width or extent of the super oscillation, super growth, or uh, or other properties of the function. So this is a very convenient tool of generating super oscillation or super growth at at will. So what we do next is we come up with an approximation scheme. So suppose we have a space of band limited functions and we have a target function that's outside the band limits. So let's say a sine wave that's oscillating way too fast. And what we want to do is we, in a certain region shown here in black, we want to create a band limited function such that in this region, the function approximates this uh, target high, high oscillatory or uh, arbitrary behavior. And I don't care about how it will behave outside. So uh, uh, this can show a different behavior outside, but it will this in this region. So how do we do that? So uh, let's look at the Legendre polynomial expansion. So if you go to real space, it uh, turns out that the Legendre polynomials, their Fourier transforms are spherical Bessel function. And uh, you can use them to approximate an arbitrary function between region x1 and x2. So what you can do is you can see it as an optimization problem where you choose CN such that uh, this uh, L2 norm, this the error between the difference between these two functions is uh, minimized within that interval. So this approximation of like generating arbitrary target behavior is not the new concept. So it's been around, uh, 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 there's been previous works by Soda et al. and Clemens et al. Uh, so what they did was uh, uh, gen uh, uh, like approximate uh, arbitrary function behaviors in terms of band limited functions. But what they relied on was that the function could be approximated in terms of uh, polynomials. But the method we prescribed, it doesn't require any uh, assumption like that. And we'll see in a moment. So this is showing the results of our, some numerical simulations. So on the top panels, I'm showing uh, the function uh, with respect to uh, the region between minus uh, 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 minus half and half, and the blue shows the target function, and the red show red dash shows the uh, approximated uh, band limited function, and you can see that we are able to approximate cos 10x e to the power 10x and a uh, and, and a step th function theta pretty well. So this is actually generating a continuous approximation of a discontinuous function. But if you zoom out of the function, uh, like look at the region minus 20 to 20, it, uh, it shows some uh, very uh, wild behavior outside, which is needed because the function needs to be band limited. But if you zoom, uh, yeah, if you zoom in uh, between minus half and half, and it, it will approximate this function. So we, uh, so we saw that we, we come up with an approximation method that works for a general function with or without an approximation, uh, a polynomial expansion. Uh, so other notable results uh, from this paper include, so I talked about how this growth rate or wave number at x equals to zero you know, can be written in terms of the first two coefficients. We actually generalize it to arbitrary points. Uh, we also generalize our, our results to cylindrical geometry, which is needed because in optical systems, uh, it's actually, uh, it's not 1D, it's, you need uh, cylindrical geometry. Uh, and we also find analytical expressions for energies within a finite region, and also find correlation functions of the spherical Bessel functions. We also see that for a region, so here I'm using energy and intensity interchangeably. 
So for a region Xi, Xf, the fractional energy, which is the energy within this region, divided by the total energy, is, we, divide, we derive a bound for that. And this is given by, it is pro, this bound is proportional to the uh, uh, length of the domain, Xf minus Xi. And on the denominator, uh, it goes as one plus three R square, where R is sort of the minimum of the log log logarithmic derivatives of the function within this region. So this gives you an idea of uh, the, the fractional energy available in this uh, uh, in super oscillating or super uh, super growing regions. And if if you increase R, you want more and more super oscillatory natures, you see that the fractional energy is actually decreasing. Uh, so now uh, we talk about how to generate super growth or super oscillation uh, in uh, lab. So our experimental colleagues in Rochester have achieved that very recently. And, uh, so uh, I'll talk about how to how they did it. So in this paper, what we do is generate experimental uh, like control synthesis of uh, uh, super growing fields. And we characterize the nature of super growth of these fields. So the setup, this is the schematic of the setup. So it's like, uh, so a, a light from laser, it goes through a beam expander, goes to an SLM. And uh, the light from the SLM goes through a lens, which actually Fourier transforms the incident light. And what you do is at this plane ZF, you select out uh, one of the Fourier components from this uh, from the output of the SLM. And uh, you encode the SLM in a way such that this, this particular Fourier component uh, uh, is encoding the information about uh, it, it's actually the Fourier transform of the super growing field you are trying to generate. And then you again Fourier transform it and in detector you get uh, the super growing field you, you want. And uh, uh, yeah, so this, uh, so this is showing the pinhole here, but what we need to worry about is that basically KS max, which is the system which determines the extent of the band. This determine the, uh, the band limit of the system. Uh, so in this figure, we are showing, uh, is there a question? Uh, so in this figure, uh, on the left-hand side, we are showing uh, two functions uh, in theory uh, or, or numerical simulations. And on the right-hand side, they're experimental uh, reconstructions. So on the top panel, we are showing, uh, in the first panel, the black dashed line is showing the intensity of the function. And uh, the blue lines are showing uh, the uh, local growth rates. And the red dashed lines are showing the system band limits. And you see that there we have super growing regions here, here. Uh, and, uh, and in the next one, we show the super growth strength, which is basically a, a scaled version of this growth rate calculated with the intensity. Here, one means one determines the band limit. And we can see that this function is uh, super growing in these particular regions. And in the plot, plots below, we consider a function which is not super growing anywhere. Uh, so in this case, the growth rate blue is always within the band limit, uh, which is again seen in this plot as well. So we reconstruct these fields experimentally and we actually uh, see that uh, uh, we are able to generate super growing uh, optical fields experimentally. Again, in this case, we don't see any super growth because our target field wasn't super growing. And uh, in experiment, we, so in this case, the maximum gamma is, you see, is actually 18.3, uh, which is like the uh, super growth strength. And this is showing uh, like the uh, plots of the, uh, like the nature of the intensity of, of a super growing field. 
So on the bottom two panels, these are for sim from numerical simulations, and the uh, top panel, these are experimental constructions. So this is showing the intensities, and the panel C and D, they are showing the super growing regions uh, identified by the white uh, region. And uh, you can see that uh, we are able to generate like mimic the behavior we wanted pretty well. And if you consider uh, a line cut of this intensity and look at the super growing strength along this region, you can see that this is showing super growing, uh, this, this is showing super growth in this particular uh, regions. And this plot F here is plotting the area of super growth versus the super growth strength for two different kinds of functions. So the red dots corresponds to functions generated from uh, some numerical optimizations we did. And the green stars correspond to uh, functions generated from some analytical, heuristic analytical approach. And the optimization we ran was we tried to optimize the super growing area, uh, like the region of super growth. And you can see that optimization is performing better uh, and it's showing uh, more regions of super growth. And uh, the highest super growth strength we have achieved in this way is, uh, I think is somewhere around 19.1 or something. And this is identifying this particular uh, uh, reconstruction of the field. So uh, in short, um, at the end of my talk, so, so we show that super growing optical fields, there are better alternatives than super resolution based far field super resolution imaging. We come up with a method to do sub wavelength object reconstruction based on super resolution and super growing fields. Uh, we also showed how to mathematically generate super resolution super growing functions. We show how to, uh, how we can mimic arbitrary function behavior in an interval. And we synthesize characterized super growth in lab. But this is not done yet, so we still uh, uh, have a lot to do. And further works that can be done are basically performed super growth based imaging in the lab. And another question is, is uh, we have considered super growth and super oscillation uh, separately. What we can look at is a mixture of the behavior. So, in, in, so instead of looking at either real part or the imaginary part separately, we can look at the whole logarithmic derivative and see if there is a particular values or, or particular uh, logarithmic derivatives that lead to uh, a better imaging in experiment. So that's another interesting direction one can take. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for the references. So uh, on the last point, you were mentioning that um, like a natural thing would be to consider whether the absolute value of the logarithmic derivative is larger than k max. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so is there any interpretation of what that means? Like suppose you have a case where neither the real or the imaginary part is larger than k max, but the absolute value is. What does that mean for the function? Yeah, that's a good question. We have actually talked about this, uh, uh, like how one would interpret that. Uh, the way I see it is, uh, so far my understanding is basically it is giving you an access to uh, sub wavelength feature inside the objects because uh, you are looking at the uh, uh, at the function in complex plane. But yeah, this is something we we have yet to explore properly. So it's open questions. Any other questions? From Zoom. Questions from Zoom. Uh, I have one question uh, regarding your plot. Is in, in your integral, you're integrating from minus one to one, but when you were doing the plots, you're doing from minus 0 .0 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. Is there a reason you're choosing those limits in where you were showing how you can reconstruct 
Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, why you are searching minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5? So this plot versus. Uh, I mean, I'm, why why are you searching? Is it? I so mean, this is just you can a, do it for like further. Yeah, so you can do it. Uh, so this is just a uh, interval which we chose arbitrarily. It can be zero to one as well, uh, uh, or any other interval. So it's sort of like we we just chose it for no reason. Uh, I mean. <laughs> I don't want to say no reason, but we, because yeah. because what you are showing in the lower plot, you're going from minus 20, 20 and everything goes off, right? And then yeah. you're saying from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 is working. So I was wondering how how much further it works and then it stops. I mean, is it? Oh, yeah. So that's it, something. It, it depends on what you choose, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. So this actually depends on your target function. And it also uh, depends on how many uh, like coefficients you are using to approximate the function. Uh, but we we have seen it work for uh, pretty uh, large ranges, but uh, I don't know if there is a mathematical limit to how far you can approximate the function. So, yeah. I have another question. So for super oscillation, one of the reasons the experiments are difficult is that the dynamic range of the detector is limited. So you actually right. have five fields outside, so you cannot measure it. Uh, how, is the amount of growth that you need uh, is less than what you get outside of those regions? Uh, so so you, let's say you, you, you mentioned you got 19, I see 150 over there in terms of growth. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, you're limiting your uh, growth to be less than what we get in super oscillation? Or? Uh, you're talking about this uh, this thing? Or... Yes, let's say this thing, yeah. yeah. So you right now have about 400 something growth, right? Right. Yeah, so let's say if we, if I use something with super oscillation, still consider 400 growth outside. Can you compare the resolution you get into? Um... Because the problem with super oscillation is the growth, right? That's the problem we have outside of the region. That's the reason. We got yeah, so, so the problem right. is basically if you try to generate functions with higher uh, super oscillating or higher super growth. In both cases, the intensities become too large. Okay, so uh, like outside the regions. So the growth that you consider inside, like the the ones that you're showing me experimentally. Uh, let's say nineteen something. It was like. Oh yeah, yeah. They're well below the ranges that we use in super oscillation. That's what you're saying, right? Uh, it's it's not. Uh, so. Uh, you can get super oscillation. Uh, I think it depends on your system. Uh, uh, I think you can get super growth, the super oscillatory strength of this same similar uh, ranges as well in experiment. Uh, but yeah, in both cases, what happens is that uh, as you go towards higher and higher values of growth rate or wave number, uh, I mean, the side lobes tend to understand how to choose this one versus that one. Uh, like the growth rate versus the, 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 the using super oscillatory let's say, versus super growth. I so don't want the, to on what, uh, uh, yeah, so for similar growth rate as this, uh, as I have talked about before, so the growth rate you can, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so. The growth rate, the maximum growth rate or maximum amount of. Uh, yeah, so the maximum amount of uh, super oscillation you are going to get is depends. Yeah, but that, that's inside though. That's inside the region. Uh, yeah. Right. So, so the one of the problems with super oscillation is the growth outside. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this is the uh, so what I'm saying is that the parameter A determines the value of how much super oscillation or super growth you can get. Yes. But uh, but this also means that if you go to larger A's. The intensities outside will tend to blow up, and uh, which is which is not what we want. Uh, and it happens more severely in the case of super oscillation compared to the case so of that's super... square root of two. Yes, yeah. okay. yeah, yeah. Does that have... yeah, yeah, that kind of answer. So you have this advantage of a, a little bit smaller amplitude inside while it's still getting sub Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
If no further questions, let's thank Tathagat again.